making go to logistic preparation. If you want to model an outcome, that is dichotomy. You know, when you go to the feed, you can, or it can be already, already made data, where you have your outcome to be oh, this, the, like the MIS data, you always have the, the conduct either rapid RDT, rapid diagnostic test, or they go to lab to confirm whether, oh, this child is malaria positive or is malaria negative. If you want to model that kind of data, you know that kind of outcome is what? Is binomial. Because it's either positive or negative. Or you can also have a data, maybe a more global level. You know, you can turn it to dichotomous data too. I say so. If you just set a threshold, that is, if this person is up to 11.0 gram per DL, he is uh, not, he is not, uh, he doesn't have what? Anemia. Either this person is anemic or this person is not anemic. That is the kind of data we are talking about. Dichotomous data. Positive, negative. Yes, no. Yes, anemic, no, anemic. That is the kind of data we are talking about. Or number of positive out of the total number screen. You know, instead of uh, Instead of 0, 1, you can get a kind of, maybe for a particular cluster, you can calculate out of 30 people in this cluster, only three were positive. That would be what? 0.3. You can see model with binomial. Now you will, have, uh, you, you will just have what? Three, which is your positive, the number of positive. Then you have your N, 10 out of 10, three positive. Three out of ten. That's the kind of data we are talking about. So that's the one you use logistic regression. You know, when you when you want to do your equation, you write you just like what I've written here, you can see pi is equal to alpha plus beta times x. Your x is the what? The independent variable. That's the independent variable. Maybe like the case of anemia. You can it can be you can use a ma 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 malaria parasite. It, in fact, this is what has been studied and very is very related to anemia. I work on something like this too. Maybe if somebody that your head can be like a malaria parasite. If somebody has malaria parasite, what in what relationship does he have been anemic? Your, your pi is the mean of the number of mean for, 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 for certain people that has X. You know, it can't be just a single something when you model. That pi is the mean for certain level of what? Your coverage, X. It's not that you know, you, you, when, you have your, when you have your data, you have some y, x. But pi in this case, the, the pi in this case is just the mean for, for a certain level of x. Do we, do we get that? Okay. So, and uh, our challenge in this situation is that, you know, this is like a linear model, is it not? It's like linear. Pi is equal to this plus this. But we have a very serious problem here. If you draw, if you draw like your,
our data is like this. There will be from one here, zero. And we can model this kind of thing in linear, because it's not linear. And another thing is this. The, this part, the, the expression the right hand can take any, can take negative or positive value. But this one is, so the relationship between pi and the covariate is not what? Linear. So, for example, a curve of S shape. So, we have to transform, we do a logic transformation. That's why they came about the logistic equation. You do a logic transformation of your proportion. So, and relate it so that that equality can hold. Because where it now, this side can also take any value. Do, do we get it now? So the, 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 the left hand side too can take what? With the logic transformation, it can take what? Any value as well. So, and this relationship is known as the logic transformation. That's how they came about the logistic regression model. So, then, uh, we can use for, for, for the classical type, you can use maximum likelihood method to, to, to give the estimate of a parameter. Uh, that, the, 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 to keep the, so, and um, the, the, this, this is the likelihood, if the, all this, um, this is the likelihood for binomial data. I think, I think we have seen it before too. So, this is the likelihood for each of the, each of the, each of the y. Proportion then, raised to power, each of the y then, oh my. Then using our logistic regression equation, we can get this pi to be this. You know, if you, if you go back here, if you take the exponent, is it not? Then you can arrive at this. Okay. We can arrive at the, and that can give us opportunity now to calculate our beta. Then, now, if you want to, if you have your beta and you want to, you suppose you have already run your analysis, you want to interpret your beta, the coefficient of the logistic regression equation. How do we interpret it? So we don't do this. Let's say, this is the, the, the log of pi x over one minus pi x equal to alpha for beta. Then increase it by just a unit. Increase your hex by just a unit so that you can get. If a x increase by a certain amount, what would be the what would be the what, what would be the expression of beta for that? So then we just did some, uh, that is, then the second one is the probability of, have a parasite, I'm just using rain and, uh, and malaria, because this is something we have modeled and we find this so. Rain is related to malaria. In fact, in, uh, in the um, paper I have malaria journal. Yes. Mosquito abundance. And, and there's one thing I noticed in the paper I have in the Malaria Journal. I realized that when the, the rain is very hot, malaria drops. Does it make sense? That was the sludge. It washes away the breathing sack. So, and this, in fact, the beauty of research is that it's not, uh, it's not theory. I want to be telling you, and, uh, but when you do it yourself and you see it, you'll be able to, any, in fact, I remember when I, after finishing my PhD, they just invited me to come and give a talk at our headquarters office. I didn't carry any paper. Because when it got to my turn, they said I should just give a kitchen summary of my work. Because I did it. In fact, I can explain it without even looking at anything. So, so 
So what we are saying here is that we want to see if the rain increases, what would be the beta? So that was the reason why we are doing all this subtraction and addition. If you look at this, so this log of pi raised to pi divided by 1 minus pi the minus this, it will give us this. And this will, will be left with what here? Only beta. Because this alpha and this will go, this and this, 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 this and this, this and this will cancel out. So we'll be left with only beta here. Is that not? So that's how we can we can we can estimate a beta. So what this is saying is that the coefficient of rain, the beta, that is x, we have room our the x here is the what? The beta. Another thing I find very important is that also vegetation. Because I'm just dealing with a just simple, it's not difficult at all. It's just to add beta plus beta x2. That's just the something. So the the this part is not so it doesn't it doesn't change from one from one model to the other. The, it's the outcome that vary from one model to the other. Modeling of the outcome. But most time this does not change from one model to the other. So I we were able to get the beta. So the coefficient of rain beta give the change in log odd for an increase in one unit of rain. That is, when, when rain increase by one unit, what effect does it have on your outcome? That's what the beta is saying. When, then the beta naught, the alpha, what it's saying is that when rain, sorry, when the, 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 just the, the way to represent it, when there is no rain, Suppose there is no rain, that is just like the average of your outcome. When there is no rain, when x is zero, zero. so it's like the average of your outcome, the malaria prevalence. That's what be, the alpha is. The alpha we have here. That is what that one is saying. But the beta is saying, if rain, the coefficient of that particular, the particular coverage. What he's saying is that if that coverage increased by one unit, mm. it's like a control parameter. Exactly. Controlling for this. If you control for it, if you control for NDVR. So that is. Then we can to, to get the odd ratio, we just take the exponent of that beta. This is an example we have here. Yeah? The, this I think we are going to use this. Are, like we, are we doing this now or during the practical? Test? During the practical. No, I'm just trying to okay. um, see the expansion. So this is the output we have. This is our intercept. This is the alpha. This is this, the the coefficient. So if you take the exponent of this, it will give us log or of rain to to malaria to 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 be malaria to be malaria positive. It is if rain increase to certain threshold, what is the probability of what being malaria, malaria positive? So if you look at it, you you have the no deviance here. The no deviance here is that. When there is no, when you have not include rain in your model, that is the no deviance. But the residual deviance is, if you look at it, you will see that the, the residual deviance is smaller than uh, the, 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 the no deviance, which means rainfall is contributing something to come in down what? With what? With being malaria positive. Okay. Please, can I ask? Yes, yes. During Amatan, there's not usually uh, malaria, malaria cases drop. Yes. Is it because there's no water or because the dry winds, the, the, the low, uh, the low, 
relative humidity makes the the mm. insects. I, I think a biologist will explain that, but but what I've observed is this: they don't even have somewhere. The the, the, the the mosquito don't even have somewhere to breathe. Mm -hmm. so, it, it, yes, it will dry up. Uh, and at even certain temperature, mosquito don't thrive. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what, what no, why why is it that they don't you won't see mosquito in Europe during winter? Mm -hmm. so, during so, summer. What, what, during summer you will see them. Yes. But the good thing is that they are on they, they don't have the parasites. Yeah, yeah. But during winter you won't see mosquito. So I started they won't they won't survive. So that's and that and that's why Africa is so good for mosquitoes. That's why we have not been able because the temperature really suits their breeding. Mm. The temperature. I, in fact, I consider that in, my, in the malaria model, too, land surface temperature day, land surface temperature night. But it looks as if rainfall and vegetation are more. Yeah, they are more serious. They are more serious yeah. than that. So they didn't come out significant. Yeah. So and even when you have. Like sometimes you you have a um, uh, what is it called? It, it doesn't mean that during the uh, amatan there will not be mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. They are produced there mm -hmm. because like mosquitoes have choices of where they lay their eggs. You understand? Mm -hmm. So like some days in some yeah. other patch mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. uh, they will still have some level of mosquitoes that are very low. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, malaria cases are low. In the Amatan. But you find out that you know, when you talk about rain, rain is in degrees. Like there's a certain MMHG of rain <coughs> that washes away all the breathing sites. And then there is also an MMHG of rain that sustains the breathing site and makes uh, mosquito abundance. And then like when you have flood, you know, during the during the flood, so many of the mosquito uh, stuff are taken away, but you know, as soon as the flood is uh, get going down, then you also see some uh, parchment and then the increase in mosquito uh, begin to uh. Thank you, sir. Then, you, if you want to test for the significance of uh, the coefficient, you want to see, oh, this particular coefficient is it really important in this model. That's why they use the likelihood ratio test. And that ratio test is based on deviance. That's the one we just see in that model. You can see the null deviance. That one is, uh, if you see the value, the value is bigger than the, the, the residual deviance. Which means, what that thing is saying that, that the, the, the covariate is contributing something to that model. But if, the, if, the, if there is no more, so much difference between the non deviance and the residual deviance, which means, and the good thing about this is that your p-value, I'm talking like a classical statistician, your p-value and deviance, they are always in consonance. P-value will tell you this is the data. And deviance will tell you that the residual deviance will be less than the null deviance. So that's the likelihood ratio. So and the 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 uh, is, is calculated based on the, the degree of uh, freedom, the number of parameter, the, the the degree of number of parameter in the model M and the number of parameter in the model M naught. Now, if you have, um, you know, you can. Yeah, some of your, some of your coverage may not be linearly related. If you try to fix it with a linear something. There will be no no significance may appear. But when you put it at a certain threshold, you may get significant. Like that case of rain. 
it will increase to certain extent. The, the when rain and uh, malaria positivity, it might increase to certain extent. But after some time, the malaria infection will decrease after some level of rain. That's why sometimes we try to introduce categorical in the categorical very independent uh, variable. That like the case of rain, I can I can break it into category to see at what point does this rainfall? Oh, is it when it falls to this level to this level, it increases uh, malaria positivity. But at certain point, when the rain becomes so high, the the positivity also decreases. That's the why the need for categorical variable. And most of the, our software that we have, immediately you specify this one, they break it, they create a dummy variable within. Like starter does, I know starter does that. When you declare a particular variable, you can also do it, you can do it as, um, okay. You, you, you want to create a category. So, it will, it will create a dummy variable. So a dummy variable that will be created is it will pick the lowest level as your reference value. To pick the lowest level. Maybe I specify from 10 mm to 20 millimeter. So that's my reference. It will pick it as zero. Every other one, if it's, if it's, if it's relating it to another level, that other level will be one. Relating to another level, that other one, that one will be one. That's what we will have here. In this here, I have the three categories. The reference category, rain one. The second level, rain two. The third level, rain so. So you can also, we can also model with what? Categorical variable. You can also model with that. We will see this when we, when we are doing a practical. So, this, like this, uh, something I have in R. That's the command in R. I specify the formula, the, the HML32. That's my malaria. That's how they code it in MIS, MIS data. It wants to see a, a, a HML32. That's a malaria positive or negative. So when you see your MIS data, those that want to go to the metadata, you will see all this value that they use there. So then the factor. Right now, I put it in fa I put it in factor. Category. So I put the rain as category now. You, you can see I specify it as factor. The factor. Then the family. The family is a binomial. And the link is what? The logit link. Then I put my data. The parasite. So, and I have this. This value. You can see here, rain category. Look at this, and this is exactly what I was seeing. The for, for the for the first level of rain compared to the compared to the reference, it was not. If you look at it, there is no star 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 there, so it was not significant. But when we get to level two, that was where the significance is. That is, at this level, malaria parasite decreases with what? With increase what? Rainfall. That's why you have the negative value. At this level of rainfall, malaria parasite what? Decreases. And if you look at the the, the non-deviance, you can see one uh, good. If you look at the non-deviance now, the non-deviance is C791.8. Because I've, you, you can see that this categorical this categorical variable fits the data better than when I use it. When I use it, you can see that the, the residual variance has decreased more than before. This is six, seven. So that's why you try. You try. In fact, I always there's one bad thing I hate about my supervisor. You will try until there's nothing to try. <laughs> and everybody in the institute so much hate for this until there's nothing. 
to try. You may be thinking, oh, I, I think I should go and submit to this manuscript. When you get to it, she just come on. Have you tried? <laughs> <laughs> My head would be as if I should. So, so he said, Oh, did you even try this? So you have to begin to rearrange your data again. And I and the reason why she was doing that is this. So that when your papers get to the peer reviewer, they have less work, work to do. And they, nobody will throw your paper away. So that's that's why. But although it can be very painful to so, so we can see that the, the categorical independent variable is bringing more, a better something than it. And now, look at the, the, okay. And if you if you look at the if you look at if you look if you come down to and you look at the the odd ratio, when we take the exponent of the the beta, when we take the exponent of the beta to get our odd ratio. You will see if you look at the confidence yeah. interval. Look at the confidence interval of rank category one. You will see that that interval includes one. Is it not? Mm, that is that you, you can say the beta not that you can say that beta not is what is not. You 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 can say that beta not that 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 particular beta. Sorry, that beta is not contributing significantly to the model. Once it, you know, you are saying all this, comparing one to the other. Once it is unity, there's no what? Significance. Do, do we get that right? You know, it's like saying this, one time, anything. Does it make any difference? So that's the simple, the simple explanation. One, one times anything. It doesn't change anything. One times one is one. One times five is five. Is it not? Yes. So I think that's the simplest way to, to say it. Because the interval, if you look at that interval, 0.962 to 1.32, one is included in that interval. So that particular beta is not significant in this way. If you come to the other side, that one is 0.6. This is the whole heart, but the interval. If you see that interval, that interval doesn't include what? One. So, this one is saying it decreases, if you look at it, rain decreases by. If you look at the odd ratio, this one is saying it decreases malaria parasite. This is saying it decreases malaria parasites by how much? The odd ratio. And if you look at that interval, the interval does not include what? One. It doesn't include one. It's from 0.66 to 0.87. So this one is contributing to the model, to coming down with malaria infection. Hello? I hope we are not tired. No. Sorry, sir. Can you repeat the explanation? Okay. Now, for the the first one, the the ring category one, we said that one is not significant. Because the interval, if you look at it too, in a, where you have the the p value, the p value, if you see, there's no no star star star. This is a R, and right? it doesn't give. The, 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 there's no. There's, it doesn't. It's not contributing significantly. 
to the model. Rainfall at that level is not contributing any significant to that model. That's what that thing is saying because the one that are significant, you will see this either one star. Asterix. Sorry, asterix. You will see it. Now, at a, at a certain level of significance, maybe 0 0.01 or 0 0.25. But when you come to the, and um, when you come to, when we did the exponent of the, the horde, to get the, when we did the exponent of the beta, sorry, to get the odd ratio, so that one will really give us a better something. If you look at it, the odd ratio is 1.27, 1.12, sorry. But it's not significant. It will have been that, oh, the rainfall increases. Every unit increase in rainfall increases the malaria parasitemia by 12%. Is it not? Because one is the reference value. But it's not significant because that interval include one. One you see 0.9 something, even if it's 0.999 to certain something. Once the one is included in that interval, it's not significant. Now, if you look at this, this decreases rainfall. By how many percentage? I think by 20 something, 76, you take it from one. 76, 74, 74, 74. Which one? The second one. The second one. Zero point six. 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 Zero once it doesn't include unity, then that um, particular variable is what? Significant. I hope it's clear now. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. The same thing we did here, we can do it in Bayesian. The only difference is that now you have what? Prior probability. We can also predict with this because once you, you just write out your you just write out your your equation and fixing the value, maybe like uh, this one now, uh, interpreting the logistic my cortical this this is the logistic model is this where we have the, the the if you look at it we have our our alpha to be minus point three eight, we fix that into our model. That's what we fit here. Then the the beta for the rain category one. Then with this. So we said if now if we have rain four, the prevalence of malaria for individual rain of Because the way I the way I, the, the way I the way I break the categorical variable, the the one that is the level, the the level one. Okay, the prevalence of okay. If I want to calculate the prevalence of malaria for the person that is dwelling in a place that has rainfall between twenty seven and 38 mm. I think that one fall into the it fall into the category Let me okay, let me see. I think I category two. Yes, good. Category two. Between our both. So we can get it, we just slot in the value referring to so we get it to be point four three four. Then we can also look at the, the, the and the interval is this. And that's what we have 
in that meeting, this, this interval, for that category two, this is not happening. I will not do that. But when we, the, 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 Now, let's go to the Bayesian formulation. Is it going to be the same likelihood? The likelihood will not change. But now, the only thing that we do in Bayesian is that we introduce the prior distribution. Now, this is still our, the likelihood function is still like what we have in the classical. So, everything is still old. Now, we, we need to specify prior. So, we can specify a uniform prior. We can specify a uniform prior. But now, we can specify a uniform, we, in, in, okay, for all our, good. for all our, all our, all our parameter, alpha, that is your, what, what do we call it in mathematics? Slow, a uh, gradient, is it not? The alpha, uh, in, sorry, intercept, intercept, then the, the slow, sorry, yes, the intercept and the slow. Now we have to specify prior. Beta is slow, why the other one is intercept? Yes, beta is the slow, sorry, beta is slow. So we will now specify prior for all the beta, the alpha, then any other any other parameter, maybe like uh, the the variance. We also specify for it. So you know where we, if you look at this, if you look at it, we we'll say <coughs> beta and alpha. Why did you specify minus infinity? That is, we assume it can take any value on the real line. Is it not? So, that's why we say alpha, beta, they can take and on the and uniform is always yes, the density. It's always, that's the definition. So, we specify that there. Inference from beta and al beta alpha and beta based on margin that is marginal distribution relative to the the other parameter in the model. But the good thing is that we don't need to do all those the stress of uh, integration, Markov chain, Monte Carlo solve that problem. You just need iteration. You just iterate it, give it initial value give it the prior, then you have your posterior distribution. How does the uh, integral, like this integral, if you have like so multiple of something, imagine you solving that integral. But the good thing is that Markov chain Monte Carlo solved that problem for Instead of con uh, concentrating on solving integral, like uh, almost infinitely, so you can do iteration with Marco, and that is the reason why the open bug was developed. That was the reason why the open bug was developed. And that's really tough. Now, if you want to select the, also the model that fit, I, I will not say the best model in this case, the model that fit your data best. You use different information criteria. So, and uh, the thing we always do is that the model with the that fit the data best is the one with uh, the smallest DIC. The model, if you click on it and it tells you the model is statistically uh, that, uh, that is is uh, is uh, that that your model is okay? You compile, you load in your data, you compile, and then uh, you can always tell it to. It gives you option to generate initial. 
or load initial value. If you are if you are starting, you can tell it to generate initial. After some time, if it has done from born in, you can use that initial value. You, you, you can tell it to save state. Those are the things we will see in the practical. Tell it to save state and the value that it generated for those your alpha beta. You can now use it. You can use it to you can load those values later. Now these are very important things. Prior must not be de derived from the current data set. It must not be derived from the current data set. And the initial value can be derived from it. Maybe you have done uh, your, your classical inference. The value you get from your beta here, you can use them as your initial, initial value in an in a, in a open board <coughs> environment. All right, thank you so much, sir. All right, so we are going to be having a question and answer session now.